5R44E as a transmission that replaces the 4R44E and that was the 4R44E is what we got in our 98 Ranger out here and uh, it's got five forward gears including the fifth it's an automatic transmission with five forward gears including the fifth gear overdrive and it's got synchronous clutch and band applications Synchronous clutch and band applications. And I mean, you know, synchronous means that it basically times them against each other, yeah. uh, which is pretty handy. Uh, and and there, so we're basically talking about, uh, you know, this particular transmission today. Uh, all right. Now, I want to show you guys on the. I want to show you guys on this thing what we're going to be looking at. These charts right here are something you need to understand how to look at, and that's the reason I'm showing you that. Um, because you're going to be able to use this kind of chart. They've got several of these type of charts on these transmissions because they just about got to have. And um, so, uh, but anyway, I want to try to get through with this before that lady gets here with her transmission range sensor thing. You know, because uh, she asked me, if she, she asked me if she was going to have to wait for it five hours, and I said, well, maybe not. Maybe. Not. Maybe not. Archie usually works pretty fast. Have have You've seen Archie work. Archie is a ball of fire. It only takes about 30 minutes, an hour, maybe. Yeah, okay. 30 minutes to an hour, maybe. We're going to get it done as quick as we can. All right, I'm going to turn this around over here. I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to point it at the screen right there so we can see. Uh-oh. I messed up on that. Five hours, Archie. All right, we're going to look at a couple of charts here to start with. These are clutch and band applications for this thing, right? You see the clutch and band applications. Now, look at the way this kind of thing works. All right, now, look at what, you, look at what is uh, in park. See, they got all of this, all these parts right here. Now, you got to know where these are when you're going into the transmission. But the fact is, if you've got a problem in a particular gear, you're going to go to this chart, and you're going to say, what is applied and what is not applied in this particular gear that I'm having trouble with. All right, you see that? So you're going to find this in your book, basically. Typically, you can. It, it's somewhere. You're going to find it somewhere. You know, a, lot, a lot of times it's hard to dig up if you don't know exactly where to look. And sometimes all data will have this kind of information, and sometimes they won't. But you got park. What's over there? You got. You're not. You're not doing any of that. Huh? TCI or what is it? Yeah, transmission control indicator line. Reverse. All right, look at this. Low reverse band is applied. Direct clutch is applied. The front one-way clutch is holding. What does that mean? The one-way clutch is going to be only turning one way. So the prevailing influence is to try to turn it against its lock. So if it's actually going the other way, you know, it's referred to as overrunning. See where I'm going with that? Okay, so that's basically a neutral, you're just like Park. <laughs> yeah, obviously. And except for Park Paul is not locked in. And first, forward clutch is applied. The front one-way clutch is holding. The coast clutch is overrunning. The rear one-way clutch is holding. And the coast clutch is that, you get that. All right, then you got your engine braking. It is, does not have engine braking. What does that mean? When you let off the gas, the transmission is holding so that it will slow you down. Right. That's what engine braking is all about. Uh, the transmission control indicator light is off. All right. First, A. All right. Now there is uh, whenever what A is basically when you've got your button pushed to turn off your own okay. drive. Yeah. So that's that's when it's got when it's got that on. And so it's telling you slightly different in some of these gears whenever you've got that transmission control. What's the hand mean, Mr. Rich? Huh? What's the hand mean? That hand is basically the mouse. <laughs> yeah. I could actually be using the hand instead of my laser. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty good question. Second gear, look at that. Front overdrive fan is applied. Forward clutch is applied. Front one-way clutch is overrunning. Now, if the front one-way clutch is supposed to be overrunning and it's locked up, then wouldn't that cause you some issues? Yeah. All right, so what would happen here, let me ask you this, what would happen here if this clutch would not hold either way? Go ahead and go in first gear. 
All right, think about it. Now, how does that mean? Now, what if you're looking along here and you're noticing that in second, let's see, second, a third, fifth, wow, you're going to have something that's kind of fouled up. You're going to make some noise. There's going to be in a different gear than it's applied for. And all that. We're going down here. Third, intermediate band is applied. Forward clutch is applied. Front only clutch is holding. See how important this chart is for you to understand it? Nobody has all this stuff memorized that I've ever known. You don't have it all? No. I do not. I'm not going to try to memorize this stuff, because I'm going to forget something crucial, and I'm going to get myself in trouble. You're better off to have it on paper or in, or in your laptop in your toolbox. Lamont's got a big old laptop standing up on top of his yellow toolbox, and he's got a laptop that's right there hooked to the wireless network in the shop. That's where he gets his shop mail information from me on right there in his toolbox. Uh, changing the world. We have a wall full of books now. Over, 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 over. Anyway, so look at all this right here. I tell you what happens when you when you when you think you know. This is one of the things where I got so comfortable putting spark plug wires on GM cars, you know, the Chevrolets and the Dodge and the 1843652. Hey, I can do this, you know. Pop, 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 pop. Put those things, route them right, make them look real pretty and all that kind of stuff. One day, somebody threw me a Cadillac. <laughs> so I do the same thing. Hey, that's the GM V8, you know, that, 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 like, eh, hoo, 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 bam, popping out the back. And I said, well, maybe the ones going through the motor mount, some of the plug wires used to run through the motor mount, maybe. Run to it. Maybe, one, maybe I cross them when I put the motor mount. So let me put a swap piece to it. Bam! Fire coming out the back and out the carburetor. And the old guy that ran the shop says, Look that up and find out what a fire is. You got it all fouled up. I thought, well, I thought I knew how to wire up a Chevrolet or a GM, you know, because all of them got the same fire in order to be it. In those days, without, except the Cadillac. It's all screwed up. It's got a fire in order like I ain't ever seen. And so if you think you know, you can get yourself in trouble. This is when you was young, though, with it. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I was about 19 or something like that. All right, that tells you when you didn't get yeah. it right. I got, I got body slams on that one. But anyway, see so yeah, how this is, do you understand, do you understand how this is, how this is important? Now, you remember on the, on the Crown Victoria, they wouldn't do anything but back up? Yeah. It would be interesting to look at the chart on that. I ain't worried about it, I gotta figure it out. Yeah, you gotta figure it out. Because you said the intermediate clutches weren't even in there. They weren't. Yeah, so. That wasn't making no point of me. You know, but you were going to tell JT about it. That's yeah, the I'm point. Tell there's much stuff wrong. Thanks for telling. I ain't telling nothing. I had to look it up. Uh, and he stands for no effect. All right. All right. Now that's the clutch and band applications for that. Now let me go down here. Look at this right here. Solenoid operation. Look at your solenoid operation. This is important too. Now this is. A, there's your gears. Look at that. See, this doesn't look quite as complicated, but you're still going to use this information when you're trying to troubleshoot one that's not working right. Okay, so look in your park in neutral, shift solenoid A, B, C, and D. Look at all of them. And then you've got engine braking. <coughs> you don't have any engine braking in anything except four. Drive, right? As it would told you on another chart, too. Well, actually, on first and second, you do, too. But going down to this point. Now, look at this. Look at how these are. On, off, off, off. Okay, reverse. On, off, off, off. Isn't that interesting? Sure. Wow. Okay. Look at drive. One. On. Off. 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 Well, ain't that cool? But when you get down here to overdrive, on. Off. On. Off. <laughs> now, you remember what I was telling you the other day? I said it seems to me like when I was first thinking about electronic transmissions that had these shift solenoids, I figure. This one would be on in first. That one would be on second. <laughs> That's not the way it is. They're all over the place. Okay, so you got fifth gear. You got off, off, on, off, no. And then in drive, you know, first you got on, off, off. It's just the same way. But you're going to basically go through this, and you're going to say, which solenoid is wrong, which solenoid is wrong. Now, if you go through some of the industry training, they're going to have some charts like this. And I may throw some of these at you on your final exam, guys, so don't. Get too, don't get too complacent here, uh, where I'm going to have a chart here, and I'm going to say if this transmission is not doing right in this gear, which one of these solenoids would be the problem? Or if this solenoid was stuck on, what, what kind of a gear would you have trouble with? Okay, so PCM control, on time calibration dependent, so on and so forth. You know, what they're saying is sometimes, you know, the calibration will be different based on when it was done, I guess. All right, that's what I wanted to show you on that. Let's move on down here.
Oh, uh, you got, uh, let me come down to where we're at and look at this. You got shift adaptive pressure control strategy that enables the transmission to learn the best pressures for shifting based on driver demand, operate environment, vehicle operate parameters. This is the thing. If you drive the car a certain way and mama drives the car a different way, it's not going to act the same way. If mama's been used to driving it a certain way, now this is what happens. If, if granny's been driving the car and she brings it in for service and you've actually worked on it enough and driven it around enough to where it has changed the way it handles things, then granny may notice that the transmission doesn't drive the same way after she gets it back. And she's going to think you're giving her a hard time when you say, well, you need to drive it for another week and see if it clears the things up as active. If it don't, then we'll look at it again. See? Now, that's like your, uh, you remember how when you change the battery in a Dodge truck, it won't idle all of a sudden? Yeah. You ever seen that before? Yeah, you got to clean the throttle body and all that while you're changing the battery. Because it, it, it's not learned to idle with all that sludge in the throttle body. And now I don't remember how to do that no more. It goes back to its original tables, and that's not sufficient because you got sludge in the throttle body. So anyway, that's the way it is a lot of stuff. Uh, okay, now then, uh, you got better powertrain control module control over shift events, and it, I'm talking about this uh, shift adaptive pressure control. Now, input devices that provide signals for the shift adaptive pressure control strategy calculations include what? Mass airflow sensor is one of them. Engine speed, turbine shaft speed. Okay, now, what is the turbine shaft speed? What, what are we finding out? What do we know about the turbine shaft? What is the turbine shaft? Why is it it's the one that actually is turning. It's the shaft that's going in. It's, per, it's driving. It's driven by the torque converter, and it's the one that provides the turning force going into the transmission. Okay, so the turbine shaft has got to... We need to know how fast that is going. There's an intermediate shaft speed sensor on this particular transmission, which is an ISS, and there's also an output shaft speed sensor. So it's going to have to know how fast all three of these shafts are turning because there's a shaft here, there's a shaft here, and there's a shaft in the back. And in order to make all these calculations that it needs to make, in order to make your uh, shift adaptive pressure control work right, it's going to need to monitor all these. When the batteries just get ready, first question, guys. First question, first question. When the battery is disconnected or a new battery is installed, it's got to relearn its adaptive shift pressure control strategy. As a result of this, the transmission may shift firmly. Got that? Uh, that's considered normal. Does not affect the normal function and durability of transmission. If it shifts firmer, it's going to last longer. If it shifts mushy, it's going to slip the clutches a little more over time and it goes in there. Right. Over time, the adaptive learning process fully updates transmission operation for optimum shift field. Now, whether Granny's driving it or you're driving it, it'll eventually learn how to shift like it needs to. All right. The changes that cause it to revert to pre-adaptive levels and possibly cause a shift field include loss of power to the PCM. That's your keep alive power. Uh, change in PCM programming, if you reprogrammed it, or replacement of the PCM. Got that? Everybody got that. All right. Now, yeah, you see them tools? Nope. Right there? You got a pump alignment tool handle. Uh, a lot of these tools right here are the ones that the that Ford uh, dealerships had to buy those. A lot of your transmission shops, uh, they've got people that do nothing except just figure out ways to make tools that make transmissions easier to work on. If you do a lot of a particular kind of transmission, there's a catalog that you can I can show you in there where you go to and it, you can actually find for a particular transmission, all the special tools that does everything you need to do on that transmission. Now, you'll pay big bucks for those. Little Some worth it. Oh, it, it depends. Some of them are worth it. The ones that the, the transmission mechanics really like will have a thumbs up symbol next to them well, because it really helps you out. Some of them you can get by without. Some of them you will not build a transmission without. You just flat won't do it. There's an align, a lineup shaft that I've got over here for the overdrive units on these. Uh, a500, A518 transmissions, you will not do that overdrive unit without that shaft. It just, you just will not. You, know, you will never be able to line it up. Because when you put it all together, those splines are slightly out of line. This thing right here is a shaft with splines on it. It lines them up. It's a hundred and something dollars for that shaft. I paid for it, but that's what it's for. Because I got some of the transmissions on it. <laughs> yep. Huh. But, all right. 
so you got these right here. So we're going to go on down to the next one. Uh, recommended fluid change interval. Look for that when we're going through this thing right here. And uh, that is a picture of it. Isn't that pretty? Nope. Yeah. Now, what is this? What is this right here? That's for the gears. Transmission range sensor. What is that right there? Anybody see it? What is it? I can't see it. it looks like a, some kind of sensor. I know that. Turbine speed. <coughs> Intermediate shaft. And on the back of the transmission, somewhere back there, they're going to have the output shaft speed sensor. All right. All right. Five forward gears. Came oh, in a 2001 oh. Lincoln LS. We're going to throw that thing in the garbage. Yeah. It's not bad. No, they right. Oh, wait a minute. I'm seeing some fluid stuff we're talking about here, so pay attention for your second question. All right, so you got a, this thing right here. Um, by the way, um, you're supposed to check the fluid. Even in the transmissions that have this stand pipe in the pan, uh, you're supposed to change that fluid. I mean, check the fluid with the engine running, just like you are with the one with the dipstick. Uh, now, on this one here, uh, you know, like on the on the explorers and stuff, you, you shove it up through the bottom of the pin. But on this one here, there's a plug in the back of the transmission. You take it out and you pump it in there. Um, uh, pump the fluid in? Yeah. You got, you know, one, one of these suction guns. Like yeah. that looks like a grease gun. It looks mm -hmm. like a big syringe. Shove it up in there. 30,000 like miles, boys. Yeah. You see it? You see 30K? That's not All right. Revised fluid checking and changing procedure. you got to move the shift range selector through each gear, stop it in each position to allow it to engage. Raise and support it with the engine running, the transmission range selector in park, and ensure that the vehicle is not sitting on a, you know, if you know how sometimes they raise them up on the lift and they're like this, you know? I mean, there's. Hold up, Mr. Ray. So, number two is, uh, it is feel polite. Yeah, because it's not severe after trying. Anyway. If it's not severe, there you go. Is that good or what? Right, you like that? <laughs> cool. It is filled for life. All right. You're going to hold a large outer drain plug up with a wrench and remove the fluid level. <coughs> um, indicating plug. I'm trying to think of the words. Okay, see right here? And we've seen this before. What you got is you got this. Let me see if I'm drawing that right. We got that right there. And inside the pan, we got a stem pipe. This is the pan. Now, I'm going to do it just kind of crooked. If it was like that, it would leak, okay? Huh. Now, you're going to take this plug out of the middle of it. You're going to hold this, which has got the stamp out. When you take that plug out in the middle, if the fluid is higher than this, it's going to drip out. Yeah. And you're going to let it drip out and let it quit dripping out. If it ain't dripping out, you're going to pump fluid in there until it goes above that hole, and then when it comes back down, it's got to be at warm. It just, it's got to, the transmission fluid's got to be warm because you know how the fluid right. swells up when it gets hot and all that. So this is going to make it absolutely perfect. This also keeps the customer from being able to check it yourself unless they are really patient and they got a lot of smarts. One of the things I don't like about this system is a lot of the times when you go and put your Allen wrench or whatever in this silly little plug in the middle, this stupid thing strips out. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, you can use this for a drain plug. If you I would do that on that explore. Yeah. And I actually happened to have one of these transmissions over there. We went and robbed the one out of the pan on the one I got so we could get it going. But that right there, uh, that little thing is a pain. So you better be able to lay your hand on one of them. You know, because if you strip it out, you won't even be able to check the fluid until you, you know, take that thing out. All right. All right. See that? There's a yellow. There's a little tool that you're supposed to screw in there where that plug goes. And that's how you're going to shoot the fluid up in there. See that? Yeah, we didn't have that tool. We didn't have that tool. We just, no, had, we just had to work hard. Way. That's a special fill adapter. It's like a little, you know, threaded thing with a nipple that you put a, the hose on and go up in there. Now, look at there. There's your fill plug on that one. See that? See here? Now, watch this. The 5R55 in. See that? I've actually, we've actually filled them up. Dr. Crudop, you know, the, the guy that drives the Crown Big Company uh -huh. here, he's got. A Lincoln LS that we did a transmission service on, and we filled it in. Come on, Filled it from the back. Give me just a minute. Okay. She's helping herself with the coffee, but that's okay. Who's that? That's the lady that is here for him to work oh, on her laser. We'll go ahead and replace the exhaust system here while we're here, too. How about that? <laughs> that's all right. Oh, that sounds better. That's all right. It sounds better. Yeah. All right. Um, 
That extension housing fill plug, it says, is only used for filling the transmission on the bench. It's not used for checking or adding transmission fluid when it's in the vehicle. Well, you can do it if you want to, you know. They actually got it. They got stuff with it. But anyway, uh, there you got uh, redesigned forward clutch piston. Let's see what this next question is. Look at that. When should the bench plug, fill plug on the 5R55 in transmission be used? What does it say? Only when it's on the bench. That's why they call it a bench, right? So that's what you, of course, like I say, I've, I've known of that being done when it's in the car, too. All right. So you got to look at that seal resizer tool. You might well, some of you might have seen on the on 700 R4s, you know, when you put these seals on here, hard Teflon seals, you got to shove a seal resizer down there, let it stay there a while so it pushes the seals in. I always thought that's kind of silly, but that's the way they do that. Uh, you got a redesign tool there. Let me look it over here. Um, on which transmission and under what circumstances would you use the go no go gauge? Does anybody know what a go no go gauge is? No. Now we used a go no go feeler gauge on the Volkswagen Rabbits when we were setting the setting the valves when I was at the dealership, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a gauge that's actually thinner and then it gets thicker. So it starts with a thinner the, the, it's a feeler gauge, it's thinner and then it gets thicker. So when you shove it in there. Um, you're gonna. You want it the, the thin one to go, but you want it to stop when it hits the. So you're actually setting it so that the clearance is between the thickness of the thin and the thickness of the thick. <coughs> See what I'm saying? It'll be like like, like a 2040 or a 1030 or a 1020. So you want it to be between 20 and 20, 10 and 20 thousandths. So when you shove that gauge in there, you want that one to go through, but you want it to stop. Oh, yeah, that's the go no go. You got it. It's a feeler gauge. It's got. Yeah. Uh, I know that goes to my yes, right. that's, that's a go-no-go. -go. Yeah. Yeah, right. Now, this is a 4R70W. That's a four-speed, which is what you're doing. 4R70W is what you're working on right this now. Is it for real? Yeah. That's a 4R70W. Output shaft speed sensor, which you... Remember when you were, put, when you were putting the output shaft in, why won't this go down? Well, he was bumping against the output shaft sensor down there. Almost sheared it right off. Yeah. Uh, all right, there's normal resistance readings for it. Uh, it increased from 334 to 759. Uh, on, you know, it was actually a 1,000 ohms now. It was 334 to 759. On the newer ones, it's 1,000. That was an 01. So yours is going to read what? Uh, on the 98 model you're working on? Come on now. It, it was 334 to 759. That would been a good little question to bury in there for you, wouldn't it? Got a new ceiling range. Oh, look at here. Because the transmission filter is so efficient, the rear lube filter that was on the earlier 4 MEW transmission has been removed for 2001. Hmm. All right, so. All right, there's your accumulator retainer on that. All right, let's find our go no go gauge. Where did hey, we find that at? I put that in there yesterday. Huh? What? Yeah. yeah you, you remember that, don't you? Yeah, you had it in backwards. He, tried to, he, was trying, he said, I was trying to figure out how to get this in here because I couldn't push this far enough. Man, he had them springs squeeze so hard with that C-clamp. <laughs> I told him, man, why are you going to use the C-clamp? I wasn't even using it. Yeah. You push it down there with your foot. <laughs> he made it. He made I, it I still got it in the backwards. Go back up. Go back up. Go back up. Yeah. It's in there wrong. What? Still is. How do you figure? Because there's both my springs on the top. Huh? That's because oh, of the transmission. You're looking springs. at the transmission. You had it upside down. <clears throat> Look, there's my two springs are on top. You put both the springs on top? <clears throat> That's how they work. The well, there springs. is two springs on top, but there's also one underneath it. Well, there ain't one underneath it. Well, you better find that one, mister. That's what's all I got to say. Two, three, three, all right, then. Well, that's pretty good there. Well, actually, double nested bottom spring on one two accumulator. Well, there's not a bottom one. There never was. Well, now, that's a 98 model. You may want to make sure. Did you look in your uh, your uh, book where we had it? Okay, there's your main control valve body. Two, three accumulator reinforcement plates been removed. See how that, you were, see where it was? Uh, see where it was? This, huh? this right now. Yeah, you're tired of it, aren't you? No, we never expected yeah. to be. All right. Okay. Now, two, two, look at that. Transmissions for car applications that don't require a unique main control valve body for early car plate bills. See? Uh, the valve body is uh, going to be different. Did you know on the uh, 700 R4 when we were doing one of those, I found out there was 18 different valve bodies for 700 R4s. And, that <laughs> and as I'm, the, the rest of the transmission is pretty much the same, but there were 18 different valve bodies. 
configuration. So in line, I don't have a clue. I didn't design the thing, but they just did. Different applications and stuff. Like yeah, called please. <laughs> All right, the uh, here we go. Redesign, ca redesign casting area. We're looking for a go no go thing, aren't we? We got electronic pressure control solenoids there. Uh, this is for 70W stuff. This is a good little end out right here for you, isn't it? There's your hydraulic pressure there. taps right there. See your hydraulic pressure taps where they are? Wow. Now look at those. You got direct clutch. You got forward clutch pressure tap. You can actually check just the, on that one. You can just check the different ones. Then you got electronic pressure control pressure tap. It's different though. It's yeah. different. Intermediate clutch pressure tap, line pressure tap. There's five different pressure taps on that transmission that I you can that use. One not. Yep. So, uh, and then there's your solenoid connector gauge too. Is this a go no go gauge here that we're talking about? Oh, wow, look here. New transmission solenoid connector gauge is a go no go. Uh, it's used to determine if the solenoid connections on the lead frame have opened. So, what transmission is this? That's the 4R70W. 4R70W. If you don't have a go no go, you're in trouble. Well, we got to have one. Nope, can't have one. You got to do without it. Oh, if it don't work, you got to pull it back out. All right, it comes well, as a part so of what the. What circumstances would you use? <laughs> Hold on now. That comes as a part of the 2006 official service tool kit. The tool is used for 98. Look at it. Yeah, T kit 2000 R dash FLM. I got to have one. I got to see how much that costs. Don't don't you just know. got, right. that's for pin fit. Uh, basically, you just want to make sure that whenever the pins slide in there, they're not, you know, like this instead of biting and all that. I am not, I'm not putting it back in the car until you give me Yeah, <laughs> you, can, you can check it when it's in the car. All right, and then you got these seal installers. No, JT used those seal installers, and they work pretty good on that one. If he'd have put all the clutches back in there. All right. There's a 4R100. Four-speed automatic transmission. This is like the, it goes into pickup trucks. That's where this one goes. Okay. Let's ask this question again. Where is the, whenever the fluid leaves the transmission, it's coming from something inside the transmission. Yeah. Is it being filtered inside right to it? Well, there's not a filter in those lines. There's not a filter in those lines unless you add one. It's going back into the pan, but it's coming out of the converter. It's coming away from the converter. Because why? The converter is what makes the dead gum heat. The converter is shearing the fluid all the time, making heat. So it's going to leave where the converter is, right? It's going to go to the cooler, it's going to come back through. Now, if the converter, if there's any metal being shelled off the inside of the converter or whatever, and it has been, it's going to go in there and it's going to, some of that metal and stuff's going to go in and get in there, buried in the transmission cooler. So what we do is, and they got, you know, this is the motor craft thing, they got these transmission filters, a black filter, it's kind of like a fuel filter, it's got a magnet on the inside of it and a filter. You're going to take the line that comes from the radiator going back to the okay. transmission, put that filter in there. So anything that's coming out of that cooler is going to come and get caught in that filter before it goes back and you get metal in your transmission. I don't know, is that for high-performance transmissions? Or just no, anything? that's for the ones that you're trying to keep from having trouble with. Why don't, why don't they do that for the factory? Well, because they don't expect the transmission to have any trouble. They don't build it to make you trouble. See what I mean? But, uh, I will tell you this, guys. If you've got a torque converter that's wiped out and all of the you know, splines are stripped out of it, and you, you take your turbine shaft and stick it down in the torque converter and try to turn it, it ought to bite good and hard. But if it's all, you know, if it's wiped a bunch of metal out of there, and that metal goes and gets in the transmission cooler, and you say, hey, great, well, I've got a bad transmission here, I'm just going to, or maybe I'm putting a torque converter in it or whatever. You put a new transmission in there, and all of that metal is still in the dead gum cooler, you got some serious issues there, buddy. It's going to go in there, and some of that's going to be fine enough to get past the filter, get in the valve body. The valves are going to stick, and you're going to have to clean the deck on the valve body. So the smartest thing you can do at this particular point, and this is just me talking here, I'd sell them a doggone radiator. Mm -hmm. Or a transmission, an external transmission cooler. If they don't want to buy a radiator, say, well, we're going to put you an external transmission cooler on there. We're going to take that thing loose from radiator. We're going to run it through the external transmission cooler. But we're going to flush the lines out, too. Got it? So you want to blow them lines out and make sure there's not any metal or anything. When I'm blowing anything out, like if I'm you know, flushing an air conditioning system or whatever, and, uh, I like to know what came out of it. I like to be able to see what's it, what, came, what I got out of that dead gun thing. Mm -hmm. But if you put, you, you know, you might be the best guy in the world at, you know, yanking and slamming another transmission in there. Got it from the salvage yard, got it from the rebuilder, from whoever, Jasper. Oh, 
But, uh, you know, a lot, if that transmission cooler is loaded with metal because you, sh you know, shell some metal off gears or whatever in the old transmission, mm -hmm. so what they're doing here is they're having you put a filter in there so that any of the fluid coming back from the cooler is going to give up its metal to the magnet and the filter. And this, this filter is not cheap. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, so if you buy one of these filters, last time I bought one of these filters, if I'm not mistaken, it was like 30 bucks or something like that. Oh, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not cheap. It's not a cheap filter. Uh, okay, now let's move on here. Uh, say, which engine vehicle platform uses 5R44Es? Okay, remember, that's number five. That'd be the Ranger with a 2.3 or the Ranger with a 3 liter. And which of them uses a 5R55E? That's a Ranger with a 4 liter or Explorer Sport and Sport Track with a 4 liter engine. No, sport, that's number six. Right the 4 liter engine or the Explorer Sport and Sport Track with a 4 liter engine. Um, Component changes in the 5R44E and 5R55E uh, include, you know, between the, from that to the older transmission would be a uh, new intermediate shaft sensor, remember that, ISS, additional speed information of shift adaptive pressure control strategy, that's the reason for that. New input shell that includes pickup wheel for the ISS sensor, and it's got to be used to service all 5R44Es and 5R55Es. So... Basically, uh, what, what I'm going to accept for an answer on that is your uh, intermediate shaft speed sensor and related parts. Just put that down there. It's easier to write and all that other stuff I said. Okay, number eight. Number eight. On 5R44E and 5R55E changes that cause shift adaptive pressure control strategy revert to pre-adaptive levels and cause a shift concern and feel concern include loss of power to the PCM. Remember that? Change of PCM programming, like if you reprogram the PCM, or replacement of the PCM. When you reprogram the PCM, you're juicing the, the EEPROM up with 18 volts. You erase the program that's in there, including all the adaptive tables, and then you start over with a new program. Okay, number nine. If a 5R55N transmission is out of the vehicle for service, what filling procedure should be performed before installing the transmission in the vehicle? You're going to pre-fill the torque converter with a quart of Mercon. You're going to work on five. You're going to remove the transmission extension housing bench fill plug. You're going to use a pressurized gun and fill the transmission with nine quarts of Mercon 5. And after the transmission is installed, check and add additional fluid using previously described fluid level checker procedure. So you're going to fill it on the bench with the one in the back, then you're going to use the one the, the plug in the bottom to, you know, get it done. That's going to put the level exactly where it should be. So we can put all that down? Yep. Yes. Set it all down in a tear stained letter. Okay. Um, normal nominal resistance readings for the new 4R70W OSS sensor are. Did anybody remember? 3, 334. That's the old one. 1000. That's it. West crashed the burden of Actually, it was 1026 to 1194. 1000. 1026 to 1194. By the way, there's a cutaway. There is a cutaway of your transmission fluid filter. See that? Now, why would you need a fluid bypass? Why, why would you need a fluid bypass in a filter like that? Why do you need a bypass in a regular oil filter? Got any idea? Yeah, it's stopped up. You don't Also, look at this. During cold weather, when the fluid is thick, reckon your engine oil, when, it, when it's cold and the fluid is thick, and the oil is thick, you might need a bypass for that reason. If it's having trouble getting it through that filter, that oil gets as thin as gasoline when it's hot. You know, so. Anyway, uh, the bypass operates with a four to seven differential across the filter, PSI differential. And it's behind the magnet to ensure the magnetic filtration continues even in the bypass mode.